Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure that she's still okay. Oh, it is. She yeah. wants to do that. Um, yeah. Because she, she just finished like the chat book last week. Yeah. Which is yeah. great. I mean, oh, really can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Chair Baumgartner, mm. it's 3.30, yes. so whenever you're ready. All right, good. Oh, very nice. We've got the quorum. I'm going to go. So we don't know if Jeff's coming. I don't know if Jeff's coming, so okay. I would start. Let's just give it a start. Okay. I call this meeting to order. Welcome to the November 6th, 2023 meeting of Art and Public Places Committee. The recording secretary will take roll. Uh, committee member Azadarian. Present. Committee member Faulkner. Present. Committee member Nathanson is absent. Committee member Puentes. Present. Committee member Stewart. Present. Cha uh, Vice Chair Kiefer is absent. Chair Baumgartner. Present. Let the record reflect that all committee members are present with the exception of committee member Nathanson and Vice Chair Kiefer. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, public comments. This is a time when anyone can address matters not on the agenda but are within our subject matter, and the public may comment on agenda items when the items call. Um, do any members of the public wish to make comments right now but not on the agenda? We don't, uh, right, as a reminder, we're only taking public comment in person, um, yes. and yes. I'm not seeing anybody in person, and yes. we also don't have any attendees on Zoom. Okay, thanks for reminding me of that, yes. Okay, um, next will be approval of minutes. We have four sets of minutes that were mailed out, August 7th, August 30th, September 21st, and October 11th. They've been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections? Keep in mind if you weren't at one of those meetings, you're not gonna vote for that or make comments. Anything? Okay. Um, all right, then I will now just say that the minutes have been approved as submitted and we'll move on to scheduled items. Um, next scheduled item is the ad hoc task forces revised format work plan that was sent out to us um, with the agenda. The staff will share this work plan and this came out of feedback we gave them. I'll hand it over. Okay. Um, I have, thank you. I have printed copies if you don't already have one. Um, and I think. I don't know, it's a pretty small document. I don't think I'll share it with the screen because we can look at it better in person, I believe. Um, but this is um, revisiting uh, the same topic um, that we covered at our last meeting um, and taking the feedback that the committee provided into account. This is uh, our first draft attempt to put it, put the work plans, uh, the three different work plans into one single spreadsheet format work plan, uh, but but also adding in what the original task force was, uh, if the item is in our current program annual plan work plan, and if there's funding associated with that item in our work plan. Uh, and then the rest of the content is really what what was in those original um, work plan documents. 
Um, it's just in a different format. So it is, it's small. I, I apologize for the small size. I wanted it to all fit on one page. Um, but essentially, it, instead of having them under the headers of community engagement and uh, project development and diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, they're just all listed um, with the red items. Those are the main assigned areas. So A, B, C, D, E, all the way through, I think it goes through L, I, L, L. L. Um, so the idea here is that I think we can review this, not necessarily focusing on the content, but the format, because the content hasn't changed. Um, and, um, and then if there are suggestions from the committee on improving this, or what else would be helpful, if this is a good direction to go in, those types of comments. Um, I think ultimately we, we are looking for the committee to approve this work plan, knowing that then it will be kind of a living and working document where committee members will then sign up for certain tasks and areas on here. Uh, and then it will be kind of an ongoing work in progress with updates at each regular meeting going forward. So, um, but I'll open it up for any kind of questions or, or discussion about about this. I mean, technically, I we do have this as an action item. So a motion, uh, we're asking for a motion to approve um, today. Um, so really, if there's questions first, um, and then someone should make a motion so that we can have a discussion. Okay. Thank you. It's really interesting. I, I printed it out and I, um, I find it interesting because at a glance we can kind of see where everyone's working and what's happening. It gives us like a, a way to kind of have some accountability as well as opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, so thanks for that. Can I have one other question and I won't mm -hmm. dominate? Um, is there any priority in the listing of the different things like how you, ABC, is there any hierarchy in that? No, no. not at all. Okay. Was there a reason to put them in any order? just copied them over starting with the community engagement work plan okay. and then went from there so absolutely no priority that's something that could be added into this or that this could be kind of filtered differently um i also after kind of putting it in this format i i was attempting to try to move like things together but then realized that that's really challenging with the way that that it's currently structured because like things under A and B or A and G are towards a different goal, even if they're a similar activity. So I think rather than doing that, what, what, what I decided uh, was to ha have it be something that really committee members are paying attention to that, like if they're signing up for something that says reach out to individuals or, or organizations that maybe they're also scanning the list for the other reaching out type of activities and then making sure that they're talking to those committee members on maybe how we go about that together would be my suggestion but yeah there's i think there's other ways to do that as well um question yeah um, i believe at the last special meeting that we discussed uh, the developments of uh, kind of guidance on roles mm -hmm. of advisory committee members, or of, uh, committee members on how to engage when, if, if selecting a role mm -hmm. or selecting a position as part of one of the task forces. Uh, we were in a question about the flexibility mm -hmm. or the understanding of well, what happens if um, a committee member is busy for the period of the month and then can't make the meeting mm -hmm. or not able to update or they, what uh, I believe we'd ask at the last meeting to mm -hmm. have guidance on how or under what ways can we be flexible to support one another mm -hmm. so that we can keep moving towards goals mm -hmm. even if the, the event comes forth that a committee member is busy or unavailable for a period of time. Sure, yeah. I, I think that I'm not sure exactly what guidelines um, would be helpful there. That's the only thing that I ended up adding on that topic was at the very top. It says all areas have flexible timelines and members can sign up for whichever area they want to work on, keeping in mind that no more than three members can meet at one time. So 
that was just kind of a general statement that it leaves it open to the committee members to kind of figure out if like they can't be there but for a couple meetings that perhaps then they could ask another member to fill in for them or you know whatever that is i i'm not sure what other guidance there is okay. other than I kind of provided the most broad broadest guide of um, kind of what do you call it boundaries i guess right yeah. so um that was my attempt at that but if there's something more specific we can try to address that yeah actually i like that i think that information there uh, very useful to clear okay. does anybody else have questions or concerns on that not that way in particular. I do. My question okay, um, would be for the APPC member that dropped it, or that um, column members that are interested, how are we, um, should we communicate um, who's interested in what, and how many should we sign up for, and um, should we have dates or something on which one we would want to tackle first or second or? Yeah, I, that, that part has still is still kind of a mystery to me, to be honest, exactly how to do that. I think that we can um, send this out in a way, or maybe I have to make, make a version of this. I'm not exactly sure in what format I can send this out so that you could fill in your name and, and write it in there. Because I, I, I don't want to any, we, you know, we just need to be aware of the um, Brown Act rules related to to that, but I think that there should be a way for you to sign up for something without um, without doing that. I just have to find out what the best way to do that is. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, but I think the idea would be then once like you maybe there's a certain time frame that we're asking you to indicate your interest. Okay. Then we as staff would then look at that and then reach out to each. All the people who signed up for something in A, and all the people who signed up for something in B, and all the you know, et cetera, et cetera, and then just say, here's the folks that express an interest in this um, assigned area and 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 this deliverable. So, I think working together would probably make sense, right? And in terms of how many, I think I think everyone should just self-direct. You know, if they can manage one. One it is, okay. and if, if there's a couple more, I think it's best that people pick individually. We don't put a number for everyone. Okay, and maybe that's how they're prioritized. You know, like if if there's a lot of interest in achieving, you know, what number L or letter L, and a lot of people are signing up for the things under L, the one, two, three, or four under L, then it feels like that would be a priority and nobody signs up for you know i right and then maybe that weight that's a lower priority so i mean it feels like it can happen organically based on what people are interested in doing first and we probably should just make sure too after three people sign up for something or then don't a fourth person can't come along and try to jump in there we're probably the best bet yeah and i also think that there's like okay so each area has so the letters are like, like I said, those are the, the, the assigned areas and the deliverable for each one. And then the numbers, one, two, three, however many it goes up to, are the individual steps to take. I, I think in general, it's more helpful to have ABPC members say they're interested in one of the whole areas rather than one of the specific steps. But I also think it's helpful to say, well, I really want to be the one who is reaching out to people and talking to people. So I think it does make sense to indicate that you're interested in that, but I, I don't know exactly how signing up for one step in a six step process can be separated from saying, I don't want to do the whole thing. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's, it's definitely, a com it's complex and there's some nuances to it. I think that it just will be a work in progress to get it to the point at which it is um, more intuitive. And that makes all sense. That makes sense. So, first of all, I'm sorry for being a few minutes late, um, but I'm up to speed now. Um, <laughs> so, not to make things more complicated, and hopefully um, this question will help it be a little bit more streamlined, but um, Tara, you, you said a few minutes ago that um, there might be similar tasks in here, but they have different goals. 
Right. So is there a methodology through which we could actually have the, the task being performed? Let's say we have three people working on it and they're actually, and so we would be aware of all the goals we're trying to achieve with that task. So we don't have multiple yeah. groups yeah. going about the same task, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, if we're, if we're going out to speak, if we're speaking to organizations, we know what we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. in terms of all the goals. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that that's, that would be helpful for sure. I tried to under resources, did, which is a new column um, or it's new information based on the original format of these mm -hmm. work plans. Mm -hmm. I tried to put things in there where it said, let me find an example, collaboration with other APPC members, especially those working on outreach. Mm -hmm. So I tried to, to distinguish the ones that I knew were connected to yeah. another work through that type of note. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it could go one more layer and so, like we could go through here and say, okay, where does it, where does it say any, throughout this document, where does it appear, uh, where, where does, you know, like creating an invitation list or creating a list of organizations appear? Mm -hmm. And then you could highlight that, well, okay, it's in the one that's supposed to achieve, you know, more open houses and engagement mm -hmm. with the community. It's also in the one related to, um, uh, you know, reaching out to um, stronger relationships with diverse, uh, culturally diverse organizations. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like they're not, they're really the same goal, but for slightly different purposes. Right, which is, I, th that kind of came out of um, my, my, my questioning um, the division of the task forces, and Anne and I had a conversation about this a few months ago, and just thinking about, well, it seems like we're, you know, we, like the DEIA task force and the community engagement you know, we, we were sort of going, uh, we were doing a lot of the same things, or at least on paper, it looked like it. Um, maybe if we color code it, like we say, okay, anything that has to do with community outreach and engagement of individuals and organizations is blue. And we just color code it through the whole document. It's like, okay. <laughs> It, you know, all of these different things relate to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we, if we color, maybe if we color code it and then just have a key, okay. it could help us navigate pretty quickly through what yeah. we could combine as, a, mm -hmm. as an effort. That's a good suggestion. I think that's helpful. And I, I think too, it doesn't, we don't have to like go for max efficiency at all times too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like about ongoing relationships and stuff. So. Yeah. If we don't capture all the information at one point, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a really excellent point because one of the things we want to do is try to engage more people and, mm -hmm. and be out in the community and reach more people. So if we just say, well, it's only confined to these three people who are doing that, then we won't reach as many people. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like both these things could be in our toolkit, mm -hmm. but knowing that let's say we're going to meet with a particular group you know maybe we're doing a presentation at low cn mm -hmm. and we know oh well this is an opportunity there's like 200 people going to be here so we could hit these different yeah. points yeah mm -hmm. so we could yeah we could just tailor to each every encounter i suppose question uh, this is a work plan, and it's not a final action um, in terms of, by adopting this, we're now formally adopting that we plan to take certain actions by certain deadlines, I believe. But secondly, if, um, if we did adopt this and we did come to that point where we're saying we we're adopting this and we're now engaging this work plan, um, certainly there's a lot of different tasks, different goals here to achieve, but how is our our staff, uh, our our committee staff, and its and its offices? What are the first things or resources you need? Have, 
have you prepared on the, the office side to take in all the information and uh, with the, the information and the resources um, implement it into results? So our, like if we engage the plan, is, is the office ready to also engage? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that there's definitely staff assistance noted in a lot of places in the resources needed column. Um, and I think that we can provide a lot of the stuff that that it is lining up with or that it where, where it says staff assistance, you know, are things like, well, we can book a room for you to meet. Um, we have a list of organizations for you to start with. We have a list of staff. We can introduce you to other city staff and set up meetings with them. It's those types of actions, mostly. Um, uh, some, some capacity, of the other... capacity to add to those lists of organizations and like uh, what, how that list would be used. Uh, things like I think that. that more lives with the committee members. That's a task force. Um, uh, I see that as a more of a task force um, goal or, or a a task to accomplish. It's like in, if, if the beginning list that we're giving you isn't complete enough and through your kind of reaching out to people, you're like, oh, well, these people from Latino service providers said we need to speak to this group and we don't have them on our list. You you would be, you know, saying, hey, this needs to be added to our list. And I think that it's more of a like technical thing, like, okay, well, who's, where does the list live? Is that, is it our list? Are we adding to it at your request? Or is it something, see, I think that we run into issues with having like shared documents and having the committee members be able to access them. I'm not sure that that's something that we can do. So I think the, the staff does play that role in, in saying, okay, well, there's a suggestion to add these people from this task force, this group that's working on this, right? So that we're then keeping that all up to date, but it's more coming from you and then we're doing the more administrative piece of it. Yes, we're gathering mm -hmm. information outreach, bringing it back to the office, but the reason I think it lives with the office and the staff because this is knowledge for the public, for our, our city, this is for Senate, because we, committee members may come and go, um, you know, with, um, in their appointed times or whatnot, but the the information will live with the city because these are these are about the people, the people of the city that live here and probably will be here a long time. So that's like we don't want it to just uh, today is the flavor of the month of San Rosa and then tomorrow it disappears. We want it to be long term and existing. Well, sure, yeah. I mean, I it would live in our files, but I think it's the use of it for the purpose of achieving this work plan, which is um, the focus. Mm -hmm. I think, are you asking, are we ready to do things like update the lists and... Yeah, yeah, so um, if, if like work did get done and, and yeah. the office is prepared to take in this and... Because yeah. um, I, I believe our office and staff has had more time to draft this and work with the consultants that created it. So on your side, you're more prepared, whereas for the committee, mm -hmm. it's it's new to us, so we're, trying, we're still attempting to um, conceptualize it in our, in our minds. So, but you would be like, working together, guiding us as well as guiding you in a mutual relationship. At the end of the goal, though, it's a, a good permanent process that will always be part of the city. Yeah, we're ready to help. Okay, so we do our jobs really well. We get up to speed, we get really busy, <laughs> then um, in a perfect scenario, we're keeping you guys for really busy. <laughs> Yes. And you're looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the staff has capacity for this. You have the, the workable hours available. In the I, I can't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends on how much other stuff mm -hmm. Cindy throws at them. Yeah, I mean, right? I think that to flip this all around, the reason why these work plans were created was to have the committee members be able to have a more hands-on role in supporting the work the program is doing. Yeah. So you are our helpers. Is another way to look at it. Um, so I mean, it's a it's a two-way relationship. I mean, if, if we're, we're collaborating and we're trying to get as much done um, that that was outlined in our strategic plan. So. These were developed not as extra work for us or just busy work for you, but actual meaningful um, goals to work towards so that we are implementing parts of our strategic plan. So, I mean, I think that, yes, it, we don't really, we've never worked with a task force com commit, a committee model. So it's like, 
how how does that work and how much does staff do versus committee members so i i think it will be a work in progress to figure out how we support each other through it but um but really this if if, if these things take five years to get done that's okay if if um if there's a lot of interest in one area but not in the others and we just kind of slowly chip away at it that's fine too if we do if we, if we like achieve like i think for instance if it helps to have like a like a, a metric for cheap for um, evaluating success for these like for a for instance if you were able to kind of work your way through some of these tasks with our support and we got to a place where we could have one open house in 2024. I think that would be a success. So do you know what I mean? It's like, I think we have to take baby steps together mm -hmm. and we're a team yeah. <laughs> and we just figure it out. In other words, if we do something, yeah. we'll have succeeded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, do nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, why are we sitting here having these meetings? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's an open house look like? I don't know. What does it look like to you? <laughs> I don't, yeah, I think that there's, um, that's one of the topics to decide, yeah. you know, what what is helpful, like the way that this one is worded, if we're looking at A, it talks about first, looking at our upcoming projects and our annual work plan what's happening this year already and then who in the community should be involved with those things that isn't already and come up with a list of who we want to do outreach for for each of our current projects that we're working on and then also consider who's most impacted by this decisions that appc is going to be making coming up and coming up with a list of people through that lens. And then you start reaching out. And I think that the idea is to have some kind of open house slash community meeting, town hall, I don't know what you want to call it. I think that there could be a lot of ways to do that to introduce new people to what the committee is and does, what the public art program is. Um, uh what kind of kind of ongoing relationships might we want to be talking to people about um showing off projects that have been recently completed what new ones are coming up what opportunities there are for public input on those upcoming projects all of those types of things i think could be a part of it and the structure or the format of it could take very very different forms mm -hmm. Um, one, one example that um, we might want to consider some version of, um, so years ago I, I was, I worked in um, the city of Richmond, uh, around the Richmond Art Center and was part, um, involved with the public art program there. And just recently they, um, they ran a tour of public art I and mean, you could sign up for the tour. And um, it was par partially walking, partially um, driving to different locations. And then, um, uh, if I understood the press release correctly, um, I think everybody ended up back at the Richmond Art Center for a reception and you know, a, a chance of, to meet artists and, and talk about the project. But, and it was, looked like a pretty simple model, but um, it seems to me that uh, we could do perhaps some kind of event program like that, where um, there's a tour, it, whether it's self-guided or actually led by Tara or you know, so one of us or however we do it. So people could sign up for it and then um, we end up at some location. I mean, I'd be happy to offer the museum as a location to have a post tour yeah. gathering yeah. You know, and just so creating visibility and so people can actually, you know, this is a way of showing off recent projects and maybe some projects that are hidden gems that people don't really know about. Yeah, well, I think it, it bringing that idea um, to just starting out with a, a tour for committee members. I mean, I think that it would be really yeah. nice to make sure that committee members are aware of what uh, what's in our collection, what art mm -hmm. you can see downtown. Because we get invited to participate in other groups' tours to talk about the public art, 
that's here, but we, and we've done them over the years in a variety of ways uh, for the public. And we've done, I think the last tour we did for the committee was using Rosie the trolley. Um, were you, you yes. were here for that? Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Um, so, I mean, but there's a lot you can see just from walking too, so, or biking. Um, so anyway, yes, I think that that's a great uh, format to do something. But I also like the idea of having all committee members have all that information. So like, it's not just staff, like you could get invited to give the art tour for some group that's coming to town that wants an art tour. It doesn't have to be us, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, I like getting to a point where we're, you know, yes, we're staff, we're paid, you're volunteers. I totally recognize that and there's, um, there's a different expectation there. But I think as you're interested and as you're able and as you want to be able to have the information um, then to share it, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. So that is as someone I, I've done a lot with kids, but modeling and going on the tour with the idea that you're learning so that you could actually give it. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you might want to look a little bit more on things, but um, with that awareness, mm -hmm. while it's happening, almost like, like a do almost like a docent training. Yeah, yeah, it's like a training, <laughs> exactly like a docent training. I'm just saying with that intentionality. I think we could all rise up to, and it would be really fun. Yeah. Go, like you were like, yeah, I could do that. Sure, yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay, if that, if that was something like that, someone wanted to spearhead, then would the best way to be like, how does that align in here? Wait, just jump on or, it. I like it. Yes, yeah. that's good. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you think that is the way to go about something? Like, if you want to spearhead to, to do this project that you have in mind. You want to funnel it through what it most resembles here, or that just be like a side thing? Aligning it with this. I think it might as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have an mm -hmm. idea of where you would want to, just knowing that you're familiar mm -hmm. with something you want to are? Certainly. Setting, so mm -hmm. uh, setting up tours and, and display events and gatherings um, to show what we have in current and developing. So, so something. I will uh, certainly welcome more, more discussion if needed, but I would motion to approve this um, task force work plan. No. Second that. Yeah, great. We vote right now. If you want to have more discussion, you can, or you can ask for a vote. Any more discussion? Any more? Mm -hmm. Let's do it, a vote. It's amazing how much you, you squeezed into a document. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I have good reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to keep the old format handy. <laughs> just kind of keep it yeah. translation. Yeah. <laughs> we can go ahead, though, kind of make a date or something where and have people maybe should we email you which one we're interested mm -hmm. in and what we should do so then we can just give heads up and yeah. okay that's a great idea how about um uh, i don't know you want to do it like by by the end of this month or do you want to do it like after the holidays like how much time do people need it's totally yeah so essentially i think it would might it might be nice to it doesn't have to be a part of this vote necessarily but mm -hmm. on this topic to set a date by which you will email Jessica and I, sign me up for A4, or A, all of A, or yes. do you know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what the next ask would be in order to get people's names associated with it. Okay. And at the holiday, and especially since you're correcting papers till the next one. It's going to be a little busy. Yeah. <laughs> so I asked for me, yeah, for time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's it. give us, we, we, yeah. But all we're asking just, you to, to do is to just, it. you know, what do you want to put your name by? To do? Yeah. It's yeah. not like you have to do anything yet. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's just reading through, it's kind of understanding what it means. And deciding yeah. what yeah. you feel you can uh, take on. But And then I think we also could, before, well, well, at some point, we can go through and do the color coding, because I do think mm -hmm. that's a really smart idea. That doesn't really change anything. It just adds another way to look at the information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we could say, what, by December 4th, the next meeting? Is, I mean, is that enough time, or do you want to go farther out than that? 
I mean, it's totally up to you. I, I'd be afraid if you if we yeah. leave it to let, let's say the January meeting that people. Yeah. My, I'm speaking for myself. I'll yeah. just put it off. I agree. It's like give me a deadline and make me do it. And if we're, yeah. Our heads yeah. are in it. Let's keep yeah. our heads in it. Yeah. I'll stay where I'm at with project development. Project development. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, and and and. I, I want to stay with community engagement because it's something <laughs> that's so. But but I, I want I really want to look at the, yeah. the overlap. Let's we'll just mm -hmm. all look through these first before you yeah. start. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I step through them, but I just want to. Yeah. You're right. I'm going to take some time. I think yeah. it's fair yeah. to you know ask the us bingo. to come up. By the okay. next meeting, yeah, okay. I I and, and, and you know what? You don't have to sign it. We don't have to have our names by. You know, I'm just saying, maybe I'll take on one or two. Yes, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're I'm, not asking a lot. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Can I make a, a, a statement on anything pressing? But I do think that the area of DIA mm -hmm. is probably something we should establish a little bit or clarify what that means to us and our goals we want to do there um, before anything else, because that's kind of a free framework. That would then lead to community engagement. Yes. We don't want to be engaging with community and realizing, oh, there was a section of community we didn't like address or think about, and then we've already got a huge bulk of the community, yeah. but we forgot about, about the community because the community is all true. There well, was a great we did. type of DEI diversity. Oh, really? That's a good one. We should coin that term. <laughs> that, that, that could be a larger effort some way. Sometime. Well, and I think that the other thing is I, I think that it, sh it should be considered really in everything that we do. That lens. Um, but the committee did go through, and I can send you the documents and the links to the videos. We had a, what, four session, three sessions training with the consultants who helped us create this on exactly that so defining it what it is how this committee interacts with it how we should be aware of it so um that was before unfortunately you yeah sorry I'm the so, no, that's I, I would love to have that so material there's sense. a little bit of foundation there that that the group did did get and is trying to build on through this task force so um that, that doesn't mean at all that it, it's like done and we're done it's no. like it's always a consideration but um i'll send you the past Documents and videos on that. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think at some point we talked about instead of doing the task force, like what have we been up to, we would reserve that time in the meetings for what are we going to do coming up with our with our tasks. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Like we like to avoid issues with the Brown Act, we could spend that time in the meetings where we would be reporting out on task forces to kind of regroup with where we're at on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. I think that those report outs on the, on the standing, you know, standing agenda yeah. item um, can be, it's titled Ad Hoc Task Force Reports and Discussions. Okay. So I think that that gives enough um, room for like, someone to say hey look i've been working on this and were you doing yeah, something yeah, yeah. that was a place yeah, you could yeah, yeah, exactly mm -hmm. yes. okay bigger discussion and i think it makes sense to actually report on something that may have let's say there was a meeting or an event or something that happened and then undoubtedly there's the, there has to be follow-up of some mm -hmm. sort mm -hmm. otherwise it's just a standalone event that just disappears right so okay. um it might be the perfect opportunity to say, hey, you know, we did a presentation to this group. This is how it went. Okay, let's talk about next steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we have uh, we have our notes. We'll have, we'll have um, the December fourth be the kind of deadline for sending us what areas you want your names next to. And then, um, and then we have the motion on the table to approve. So yeah. I think we just need a vote to do a vote. More yeah. um, discussion. Okay. Um, so that was motioned by committee member Stewart and seconded by committee member Azadarian. Um, committee member Azadarian for the vote. I seconded by. No, I think it was. I think it was Lisa. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. 
Um, that was a motion by committee member Stewart, seconded by committee member Puentes. And uh, now for the vote, um, committee member Azadarian. Aye. Uh, committee member Faulkner. Aye. Committee member Nathanson. Aye. Committee member Puentes. Aye. Committee member Stewart. Aye. Uh, Chair Bumgarner. Aye. Uh, so that motion passes with six ayes and one absence, with Vice Chair Kiefer being absent. Thank you. Okay. Um, no public comment. So make sure I'm not missing anything on this. Okay. Good. The next thing is the public art and private development updates from the staff. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a, an update that I have provided to the committee about every two years. Um, so the last time that I provided an update was uh, 20, I think it was like fall of 2021. Um, so I know it sounds so long ago. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the idea is that we are capturing what has happened in our private development in terms of art um, since July of 2021 to keep to catch up. So this report takes up where the last one left off, um, in other words. And so just a little bit of history. Um, we, the city of Santa Rosa adopted a, an ordinance which establishes a requirement for commercial, private commercial development uh, to be um, uh, to have a, yeah an art requirement um, for the, those applicable developments uh, to place artwork on site or to pay the same amount as a in lieu contribution to the city's art fund. Um, the ordinance has been around since two thousand six, um, so pretty pretty well established. Uh, it really encourages the placement of public art on the development site, but does provide an option for the developer to pay the, a fee to the city instead. Uh, it applies to private commercial development um, with construction costs of $500,000 and greater, and all residential and industrial projects are exempted, so not required. Um, so, and then it also, um, just for context, the, the same ordinance also establishes that the city, our, our own general fund um, capital improvement project budget every year contributes the same 1% to the art fund. So, uh, we, and then in addition to that, there's also a 1% assessment of our park development fees that come into the public art fund. So we really, there are really three funding streams or revenue streams private development, and then two city sources. For the private development, this is a summary um, from the first full year that the program operated. Um, so it was adopted in like November of 20, uh, 2006, 2006. Uh, and then the first year it operated at a reduced rate. It was like a per half percent requirement instead of a 1%. So it was really low that first year. Um, the second year there, you can see that there were, you know, construction and development just ebbs and flows with the economy. Sometimes there's a lot, sometimes there's a little. Uh, I think also there was a, not a lot of initial outreach as to that there were two options, either the fee versus the art. So it, um, but then I think over time it's kind of evened out and, um, it kind of flip flops sometimes year to year. Sometimes there's more uh, that do art on site versus pay the fee, then it flip flops the other way. So, um, but it, it's pretty close 1.7 million total in in lieu fees since the inception of the ordinance and a little over 2 million uh, value of artwork placed on site. So, the two highlighted lines uh, these last two years are the two years that I'm reporting on in this report. And I'll go more into those now. 
So we have um, in 20, so again, fiscal year. So we're talking July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. These are the projects that took place that were required to fulfill this uh, program. Uh, the majority of them in, in that year opted to pay the in lieu contribution. Uh, and then two of those projects opted to place our work on site. In and out Burger didn't do an art <laughs> project. Shocking. Palm <laughs> um, okay. trees would kill. Yeah. <laughs> I, we've heard some pretty good um, arguments. No, really, that's a part of our, that's art. We had someone design that. We're like, ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about yeah. that. Now, that is not one of them, to be clear, but you know, <laughs> something similar has happened. <laughs> What's the session? Uh, it's the neon mountain uh, kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's neon. I, I, there's a picture okay, of it later. You can see it from the highway. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm. Here, I'll show you. Okay. I'll give you some examples in a minute. <laughs> when they do art on site, is there a set of rules or requirements? Yes. Thing? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, it, they're using, I'm, I was assuming, using local artists or something? They do not have to use a local artist. Okay. And does the art have to have any theme or a certain scope? It's very broad. The ordinance was written to be uh, relatively, or uh, in my opinion, very uh, developer friendly. So it gave the developer as many options as possible um, to, to, to kind of count something as public art. So, um, <clears throat> The key elements are, though, that the, the person doing or designing, making the art has to meet the definition of an artist that is in the ordinance. There's a, there's a section of the ordinance that defines the different terms. So um, there's definition for artists that that artist, whoever they're using, has to meet that. And sometimes the most um, kind of controversial ones are when, like, the building, the project's architect wants to be considered the artist. And it, that does not meet the definition that we have, so they're not allowed to propose that their architect design the art. Mm -hmm. um, but many have tried um, with that one. And then, so it has to be, the artwork has to be made by an artist, designed and made by an artist. It can't be, and it has to be a unique piece of art. It can't be something purchased out of a catalog. Also attempted before. <laughs> um, <laughs> it has to be, um, it can take the form of many things. It doesn't have to be any particular theme. It can be sculpture, um, murals, artwork, uh, freestanding artwork affixed to the building, um, light. Um, it even can include like um, landscape architect architecture, hardscape, soft, you know, landscape. Um, the, the, one of the other key things is that it has to be affixed to the property. So you can't just hang a picture on a wall in a lobby and say that that's affixed to the building. There has to be, some, it has to be somehow integrated into the building. So a mural on the wall or some other kind of installation. Um, How long does it have to it has, be? Yeah, it has to remain on site for 20 years. Okay. And has to, even if they business changes or the building is sold or whatever, the artwork technically is supposed to remain. Um, if it has to be moved or changed or somehow then the, it has to, essentially new art would then have to be put in. So like for instance, if, if there's a building shell and there's a tenant that puts in art, when they move in and they want to take the art with them, then the owner of that building shell has to replace that art with something else. So the artwork is supposed to, to follow the property itself. And it has to be visible to the public. It has to be visible and accessible to the public. So the ordinance does allow for the artwork to be installed indoors, although the preference is outdoors. But if it's in an indoor location, it has to be in a public, publicly accessible like lobby that you don't have to have an appointment or a key or a code or something to get into. It has to be right there. And that's visible. like that hotel in um, World Square that if there's no lobby. Yep. Do we? Is there a a kind of Spatial category like public or privately owned public space, like there is in New York. Or... I don't think so. No. Well, and actually, that's not that, true. They get air rights by having publicly accessible lobby spaces. So, so there's there's one component of the ordinance which does allow a developer to dedicate a certain space in its project for um, for recurring displays of uh -huh. public art 
or performances, uh -huh. um, but it has to be open to the public. And no one has ever done that. Yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> kind of there's been asking. there's been some people who've tried who who thought about it and proposed something, and then it, it never worked out. Yeah. So um, it's it's just a tricky one, but it is allowable if you're follow if, if you can follow the specifics in here. Yeah. Has has uh, anybody tried to uh, you know put a Picasso or some other uh, you know, expensive artwork in, um, in, in the CEO's office. Because I remember this happened in San Francisco. Yeah. It was like, a, there was a... Not a, surprised. Yeah, yeah we, 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 I was on a public art committee there for a while. Yeah. 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 We um, were like, no, you can't buy a, a Picasso and put it in the CEO's office. Yeah, I mean, if you could, yeah, no. I mean, you could do that. It just, it's, it's not, not satisfying the public art I don't think we've had something quite like that, but there, I did hear about that and Petaluma, there was a car dealership that they, they purchased expensive paintings to put in someone's office and wanted to count that, but that was in a different jurisdiction, so I don't know what they did. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I do have some photos of the ones that did artwork on site, but uh, if there's no more questions about this one, I'll move on. This is the next fiscal year, so July 2022 through um, June 30th, 2023. Uh, and so again, um, some did art on site, others paid the annual fee. Um, and then I'll show you some photos. So this is the session gym. This is the neon uh, light sculpture on the outside of the building. You can see it from the freeway. It kind of wraps around the building. Um, the artist group, they go by Right Guy is their uh, name and they, that's what they do. They do neon art installations. Um, this one is at the oh, VA yeah. Medical Building um, by Gordon Huther. Um, it's kind of like a healing garden area, healing patio, um, and the piece has dichroic glass up above, so it casts a lot of cool reflections. This is in the Press Democrat lobby. They moved into a new building. Well, they're, they're remodeling an older building, um, but they're, they're in a new spot. And so this artist created a wall-mounted piece that is uh, letter made out of old um, letterpress type blocks. Is that the artist? That is the artist. Yes. I feel like that was in like the Sonoma magazine or something. That it photo. Was, yeah, it was in the press that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which is probably I think they shared some. Dan things. Taylor did an article not too long ago yeah. about private development requirements mm -hmm. for art. Yeah. Really quick, where does the in the money go? It goes into the public art fund, which is then one of the, it, 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 like I said, it's one of the revenue streams that, mm -hmm. that funds pretty much everything the program does. Okay. So all of all of our projects, our ongoing programs, conservation and maintenance. No one pulls terms. off it, you get all of it. Okay, yeah. great. And That's what I wondered. Just so Tom, okay. real quick, and you had those other two other city fund contributions. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly? So yeah, it's the um, the city's general fund capital improvement project budget. Because okay. there's a lot of capital improvements that happen throughout uh, throughout a year or th throughout a city's you know history, but not all of them are general fund funded. Some a lot of times grants are are obtained for certain projects, or there's like major M transportation funds, right? So those types of ones don't count, but if it's a general fund project, then it gets assessed the 1%. And it's the 1%, so they match? It's they not a match, it's, it's not just, match. just okay. we, but both private development and the city are, are required to contribute 1%. Okay, oh, oh, okay. And then the second one was? It's park development fees. So those are paid by, usually by um, new housing developments. Um, and there's a certain calculation that they have to pay with for that, that is supposed to go towards the development of a new park to serve the new housing that just okay. was built. And so there's a 1% assessment for that that also goes into the public art fund. However, that one is earmarked specifically, it goes into a slightly different um, kind of account within the fund. Uh, it can only be used for uh, public art in parks specifically. Oh. So meaning public arts, so could that be some of the funds that could be used towards when we were doing the public park over there at Rebel Square? Yep, people park. Yep, people park. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. Got it. 
Here's another one. This one is at um, Caritas Village. It's the new Catholic Charities Homeless Services Center and Housing Project. Um, the, the part of the building that this is on is like the day center and their services center. The residential part of it that they built after it was, was exempt because it's residential. So mm -hmm. just for comparison. Um, but this was an artist, Martin Webb, who's done other projects here in Santa Rosa. Um, there's various spots on the building that he put up these murals. So these are two spots, but I think there's a couple other spots around the back of the building that also right. have his designs. So that's all that the update entails for today. Um, there is a new piece. There is a new mural at the Rosewood Boys and Girls Club, which I did not have an opportunity to photograph in time to put in this project, but that is one of the other completed projects. And then there's other projects that have been completed in this fiscal year, but they're not a part of this report. So one of the projects that the mural project did um, recently when they did a bunch of the murals downtowns is on um, the corner of 5th Street and E Street. It's a CPA, uh, like a financial advisor um, there. That mural by Amanda Lynn, it was actually a requirement for that building because they remodeled. Um, another example that would be on next week's report. Okay. Great. Thank you. So happy to answer any other yeah, questions. Any other questions, folks? Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, if so, uh, if a project is mixed use, let's say residential and has some commercial, um, you know, yep. retail or whatever in, in the space, yeah. um, how does that work? <clears throat> the only, the the part of the project that was only commercial, so everything else exempted from it, residential or anything else exempted from it, if just the commercial portion still has a valuation of 500000 oh. and up, it still has to meet the requirement for that amount. Yeah. But if it doesn't, in most cases, they, they don't. Like, um, there was a mixed-use project that Hugh Futrell did a few years back on Humboldt Street. It's uh, apartments, Humboldt Street apartments. I, I, I was kind of thinking of that project. Yeah. <laughs> so he put art on the building anyway, um, but it was designed by the architect, so it wouldn't have counted, see? <laughs> <laughs> but that project, it was mostly residential. The bottom floor was commercial, but just the bottom floor didn't meet the threshold to re trigger the requirement, so it was mm -hmm. exempt. Mm -hmm. Right. So then, with that, what about the place over there um, across the street from Cancer Park? Um, what is it, the 80, that's, yeah, as far as I know, that's all that that mm -hmm. the same thing. I mean, it's it's the majority of it is all residential. Yeah. So the bottom floor, according to their calculations, is exempt because it's not over uh, five hundred thousand. Oh, the bottom was not for the floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Do people just kind of generally follow the rules, or is someone policing yeah. this? <laughs> I mean, it's not. Um, generally, we believe that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. The the process and the kind of the the fail safe to ensure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing is the way that it's structured is that um, uh, architects, project managers, contractors, building owners, developers, whatever, should be getting the information that this is a part of their project at the very early stages when they're like initially submitting for planning review or entitlements or whatever. They get a packet that's like a, a long list of all the things they need to be considering to do this project and public art is, is on there. Do they like remember that? <laughs> Not always. And so the next step is that when they apply for their building permit, their, their, um, their building permit application in our permit system is flagged and sent to me. And then if it's commercial and 500,000 or greater. So then I get to review it and I look at it and if there's anything that is like it needs to be exempted for some reason a lot of times industrial projects still get sent to me so i have to go in and exempt them but a lot of times they are you know they the uh, program the ordinance applies to them so i go in there and i see okay well what stage is their permit at essentially they are not that there's a part of the workflow where i have to sign off on it mm -hmm. and if they haven't done that by the time they want their building permit they don't get their building permit so there's a lot of, um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of checks and balances and there's a lot of kind of 
a motivation, hopefully, for the <laughs> developer to get me yeah. what I need to sign off so they can get their building permit. There have been certain cases where businesses, whoever, are just like, oh, I didn't know. You know, this is what they say. I didn't know about this, so I'm just going to pay the fee. I'm like, well, that's no skin off. Might be great. You know, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll take your fee. But then other times there are, there are people who really spend a lot of time up front being very careful about integrating the design of the art into the building and they're doing it all very early and, and like they're planning on it from day one. So you get a big mix, but the same, you know, kind of requirements are there that you don't, you should not be getting your building permit if, unless you've had um, me essentially look at it and check the boxes, right? They have to decide if they're paying the fee or placing the artwork at that time. They, if they're paying the fee, we just add the fee to their kind of invoice and then that's it. If they are um, doing the artwork proposal, they have to actually put together their whole proposal showing who the artist is, what the artwork will look like, where is it going on their building, what's the budget for it. All of that has to be put together in a proposal and sent to me and I have to approve that before they get the, their building permit. Yeah. So there's definitely, it's not that we're just saying, oh, well, let's hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> There, there definitely are things that they have to do at certain times. And then after um, they do get their building permit, they have however long they need up to the point at which they want their final occupancy and they want to move into the building, that's when the artwork has to be installed. And then we go check it out and make sure it's really there and that it's not something completely different from what they said they were going to do, and then we sign off on their final occupancy. Right, so they don't get their CO unless right. you sign off on it. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Um, no, when I, yeah, no, Vicki Comfer was the one who was the arts coordinator at the time when they passed that ordinance. Yeah, and um, it's a tried and true mechanism in many other cities. Mm -hmm. so, yes. uh, yeah. yeah, I think that the, um, the benefits I mean, I've seen projects that are super successful out there. I mean, there's some that you wouldn't maybe notice or realize was a public art project. Uh, and then there's others that I feel like just did the bare minimum to get, get through it. So it's, 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 a, it's a range. Um, I think that the, one of the challenging things about the way that ours currently works is that there's um, just a lot of leeway for the developer. They, they really can pick some, you know. But you know, other cities don't let the developer do it at all. I mean, they say, okay, you have an art requirement and then the city staff coordinates the project for them. Hmm. But we don't do that. I mean, that would be a lot of work. We yeah. have to hire several more people. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so there's a range of how programs work too. Ours is kind of, ours is one of the older ones. Ours has been around for a long time. So you said earlier that um, no, there's been no projects that had like a performance uh, space or something not like that. Yet. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. And that, that's a whole other can of worms because I was in, um, on the East Coast. I was involved with something where the, they built a shopping mall and they, um, they built a really nice outdoor amphitheater and stage. And then it just sat there unused. Mm -hmm. So, so many WPA amphitheaters. Yeah, dismantled since the eighties. Yeah, but but um, um, you know, some of us noticed that this thing was just sitting there unused, and we said we went to the mayor actually and said, you know, what's going on with the other? It's like, and and he engineered a, a thing where the arts the arts council in mm -hmm. in that region ended up they forced the owner of the shopping mall to contract with the arts council to put on an annual performance series. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a very nice contract, mm -hmm. but it, it's so much more work because it's like very different than if you just, okay, the art works yeah. there, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the other thing is, is that if a developer ever did go through with doing that here, the way our ordinance is written, it only counts for 75% of their art requirement. They still have to pay 25% of the fee. <clears throat> So it really, so the, dis, in, the, my, in my opinion, it kind of disincentivizes yeah. someone doing that. But then I would hope the fee would go towards some kind of um, performance series or the management of, you know. Well, yeah. but it just goes into our art fund and then it gets used however 
you won't want to allocate it. So you know what I mean? It's like there's no there there's no it can't be tied back to that site. Interesting. Yeah. So it's not yeah, it's it's an unusual. I don't think most cities have that exact option. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a problematic option, yeah. which is why I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> so the next time we bring a report to you, probably will be in two more years. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to it next year. I don't know, but you can see. I mean, there's not usually a huge amount of projects each year, but um, sometimes. And sometimes it takes a project a lot longer to complete. Like some of those projects have been going on for a while, but they just finally completed them. So it's, yeah, sometimes it's a long process. Oh, there's another one that was completed, I think in August. So it would be in this fiscal year at Kaiser. Kaiser, their medical office building two um, by Centennial Way. If you go up to the third floor, there's a new, um, Mosaic around the skylight. So, okay, yeah, anyway. Okay, any more questions about that? And we move to um, six, which is, oh no, five, three, um, programming project updates again from staff. Great, I'll turn this one over to Jessica. We've got our Project and program updates, um, starting with our rotating exhibits. We still have uh, up at the Finley Center is the California Indian Museum and Cultural Center. That's on view through the 19th of this month, if you want to get over there. Um, alongside that one, behind the Finley Center at the Person Senior Wing is the Pomo Project on view through the November 16th. And this past week, staff co-hosted a Native children's tour of the public art program's exhibits in those two spaces, um, along with Rose Hammock. And our next show we're gearing up for at this point is the Santa Rosa's annual um, uh, community exhibit, which is the National Arts Program. So the, the um, Registration for that's going to open mid-November, and I'll make you all aware of that. And a couple of you have been on the jury before, so that's a good one. Yeah. We had uh, this last week, the last weekend of October, we had a big um, celebration for Kristen Troop's Art Surround project. She installed Claiming Justice uh, on the Trail of Local Stories. And the reception was a big blowout. We maxed out capacity at the library. Um, it was <laughs> hard the, to get in the room. It was hard to get in, seriously. Uh, the Press Democrat wrote it up twice, so it was a, a big success. And a lot of that, all that's due to Kristen really getting that out there. Um, but that was the last of our Arts Run projects. And then for the Small Business Support Program, you probably I don't know if you guys saw this report last time, but you probably saw all the murals go up. Mm -hmm. I think that was we did it last time. We did do it that yeah. last time. Okay, yeah. skip over that. We've got we do have four more on the books with um, with Art Start. We'll be doing place making pieces as well. For our Fire Station Five public art project, um, the pan the the selection panelists picked five finalists. Um, and staff just met with them to have the project orientation. That was really great. They are going to have their proposals will be due at the end of December on the 22nd. And I'll put it up on the website and I'll share it with you. But the finalists are Poshu Wong, Roberto Delgado, Robin Brailsford, Peter Requiem, and Sukyang Zhao. Three of them, I know the committee was interested, are from California. One's from Washington and one's from New York. Just a couple other little things I want to mention. Staff participated in a downtown Santa Rosa bike tour talking about art tours. This one was a collaboration with architects, the American Institute for Architects. And they we did public art, architecture, and some local history. And they also collaborated with that, with the, um, what's the bike group called? Bike Bikeable Santa Rosa. Bikeable Santa Rosa. Bikeable Santa Rosa. So it was also about bikeability. And they encourage participants to reach out about bikeability where there isn't some. Um, and then also, I just want to make you all aware because we did just have winter blasting, probably all 
maybe you went and saw it in the paper. That is one of the programs that's sponsored through the event support program. Okay. And Dr. San Rosa. Yeah. So that's it for us. And how much, questions. how do we support that event? Winter Blast? Yes. Um, the event support program is neither neither of the two funds that supported that event are part of the public art fund. Mm -hmm. They're other city sources. So out there, San Rosa is the SRT BIA tourism mm -hmm. uh, fund. And then the event support program um, is the community promotions fund, which is out of the city council's budget. Uh -huh. And um, the events have to be put on by a nonprofit, be free to attend and uh, be in Santa Rosa in order to be eligible for those funds. Okay. I had a, oh, this is really quick, but I had this really sweet little moment at the event that they did um, after I went into the library that was cram packed and listened to all the different activists talk and hear the stories. I <laughs> kind of geeked out and wore my little name tag <laughs> and just for fun. And then I was walking over to 4th Street and then one of the speakers, Charlie, and oh. another woman that was kind of accompanying her because she's elderly, um, came by and they noticed my little thing and they asked about it. And then I also had received one of Charlie's little buttons because mm -hmm. they had buttons for all the artists that Kristen beautifully illustrated. And it was a really cool touch. Yeah. And it was like, Charlie was like overwhelmed. She was like, I can't believe you have my button <laughs> and you're part of this. I said, well, I, I did not put on this event. Like, I'm only like, a, you know, I was just really backing up, like, but just like kind of gaga over her. And it was just a lovely little moment of kind mm -hmm. of full circle. So I was just thinking, you know, those little things that she did, those little details mm -hmm. with her plan mm -hmm. were really personal and actually, I think, really yeah. gave a huge honor to those people. And, I just yeah. got to see it happen. So <laughs> that's great. Well, that's cool. perfectly working because the impetus to do the buttons was to get people talking to each other about the activists. And mm -hmm. it, I know. It I don't, I don't <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. Anyway, thank you, Doug. It was really beautifully it was beautiful. done. Yeah. You did a great job managing it. So I didn't. Um, I didn't have time to do the tour. Mm -hmm. did, did you? You can still do it. Yeah, I, I know. that yeah. should be up for about a year. Okay. Yeah. And you have to go to each decal to zap the QR code to listen while you're standing there because the intention, Kristen's intention is really to get people walking through the downtown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't, but she has a great website, but you can't hear the stories mm -hmm. on the website. You have to go to each marker and scan the QR code. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it for our updates. Okay. Great. And then we are moving to number seven, department reports. Um, oh, the task force. Yeah, no, we have the task force. Oh, oh sorry. By number six. There oh, may sorry. not be I, any need for that, but if any. I thought I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, skipped it because I thought we already did. Yes. Yeah. Task force reports. Ooh. Anything going on? With you? Well, rather than the task forces, if any committee members want to announce any upcoming events or have any just general announcements, that might be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's on Thursday. Um, I'll send an invite Great. to Tara. Maybe you can yeah, send it, it out. Yeah. 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 Nice thing. Thursday at the JC. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, the museum has uh, its annual uh, Artistry in Wood exhibition opening up mm -hmm. on November 17th, I think it is. It's the um, um, yeah, uh, Saturday the 18th is the opening day, and it's our collaboration with the uh, Sonoma County Woodworkers Association. So it's uh, always phenomenal woodworking. Yeah, there is. And the people I, I saw when they're there, I went last year yeah. to the event, and they're just so present. And oh, they love to talk they about, love to talk about <laughs> what they're doing, and it's really something. Yeah, and, and yeah. everybody's going ooh and ah over the, you know, the, the wood grain and the finishes and yeah. you know, all great. the technical stuff. I didn't know it was it's an annual thing. Stuff. Yeah. Very, yeah. Good. very good. So the 18th of November, that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, now department reports, number seven. 
I don't think I have anything, okay? Today, so. All right, so we'll move past that. Future agenda items, anything that people would like to place on our future agenda or talk about something that's on it? Just a few things, if you look at the very last page. We have this December 4th thing, so I guess it's going to be kind of hard to think about. And that is our next meeting is December 4th. Are we always going to meet in this room now? It's because we didn't met in the other one. Okay. Yep. We'll so be back here. Yep. Hang on to your parking passes. Yes. Did everyone yeah. get to meet? <laughs> yes. This is Crystal. Crystal. I'm Crystal. I'll be taking over for Lonnie soon. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Training. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Good. you both. Thank you very Thank much you. for Thank supporting you. us. Okay. Well, anything else? Okay. I will, with no other things, I'm finding my last script, but I don't have it. I will adjourn this meeting today, and I'll see you in December. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.